<laughs> so I just did the mistake of eating one of these pears. I sold it right off the tree and it, it's like very drying and makes your whole mouth feel numb. <laughs> so it's inedible. <laughs> All right, let's go see Jamie. Would you buy some pears? I, <laughs> did you ever eat one of those? No, the, the cleaner just puts them all in a bucket and... I have yeah. to tell you, they're completely inedible. <laughs> oh, really? oh, did you have a bite? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so cool to be here because you see the pictures and then when you see it in person, it's like amazing. Oh, thank you. It's so much light. You have like just a flood of light from these skylights. Yeah, um, we're really lucky to find this place. So this used to be a hydraulic power station <laughs> built in 1902, so it's more than 100 years old. Wow. And they converted it into flats about 15 years ago. Wow. And I've been here six years. So. Well, they did a really good job on the conversion because it doesn't feel 100 years old, you know? It feels, there's yes. some freshness to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could just be the plants that are the freshness. Oh, okay. <laughs> so did, when you um, moved here 10 years ago, did you just start bringing plants in? Or? I only had a few plants when I moved in, like, I don't know, four or five, but yeah. the light was so good, I just couldn't help it, you yeah. know? They just, they, they were, they got so healthy because I was living in a tiny apartment yeah. in central London, really dark, and my plants were kind of, eh. When I put them in here, they just started kind of thriving and I just started buying more and more. And that was just, just before like the whole trend started. Yeah. Uh, and there weren't that many places you could get plants actually, besides garden centers in mm. London. So I used to actually take the train to the Netherlands. I went to Amsterdam to buy plants. But now it's like, oh my gosh, it's like a, a explosion, right? I just went to one of your garden centers, and one garden center actually, and I was amazed at the selection that they have. Yes. But what Paul had told me, who's the you know manager owner owner there, had mentioned that now growers in the Netherlands are feeling a little bit more confident because of the houseplant enthusiasm from all the consumers that they're starting to bring out a wider selection. Mm. And I have to say, even just looking at the Ripsalis, like Ripsalis is not really commonly uh, grown in the United States. So you could get maybe like a little like a, a cutting. Tiny, exactly, a cutting. Yes. But in the garden centers, you have these like, like this, ones, like right? very yeah. beautiful hanging you know, pendant basket shapes that are like fully grown out. That yes. seems like they've been growing for years. <laughs> I know, and I have so many followers who message me and say, yeah. oh, from the States. Yeah. They're like, how do you get your resum so big? I said, yeah. they came like that. They, co they yeah. come and they come like a curtain. It's really remarkable. But I know that some of the, the plants that you have here started small. I love seeing your before and after shots. Oh, thank you. And you know, it's remarkable because like, Whenever I have a grow light, because that's the only equivalent that I could get to a skylight in my place, um, you know, the plants do love to grow up, and you could see all your plants are like lifting their fronds oh, yeah. to the to the light. Yes, it's, it's miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, do you want to show us around and what sure. you have? Sure. So, okay. So, my thing is about displaying. I love displaying mm -hmm. plants like works of art. Really. Well, you're, that's um, kind of your line of business too, right? It is, because so, I, I sell vintage art and objects online and also in person. I have a little showroom downstairs. Uh, so I like to pair the plants with the, you know, the pots that I purchase. Mm. Um, like this is one of my favorite pots. Yeah. Uh, it's made in the 50s by a French ceramicist. I, I love it because it yeah. looks like it has a little chicken yes, on it. Yes, kippy. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> oh my God, everywhere I go, there's always a kippy. Yeah. <laughs> And this plant is, uh, I only got it, you know, this spring. It's a peperomia. This is a peperomia? I yeah. saw this at the N1 Garden Center. I was like, I've never seen anything like that. I know, it's a, I think it's one of the newer yeah. cultivars. Uh, it's, I think it's called Liadensis. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's got this kind of velvety. I love And also the like touch a fluorescent it. green to yeah. it. Yeah. With the little red petioles mm -hmm. and stuff, it's 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 very sharp and and very robust for a peperomia. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of my favorites now. Um, this you, I know you have this I, one. I want to save the best for last, but honestly, people will go will marvel at this. I mean, this is the Aglaonema pictum tricolor, and yes. the yours is so robust. <laughs> This is like, if there was a fire, this is the one I would grab. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, you, you answered my, my, you asked and answered my question. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Um, yeah, and it's almost impossible to get one. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's some on eBay now. Yes. Uh, in the UK, but uh, 
when I got this maybe three years ago, there was like, it was impossible to find one. So I asked, actually asked my mom to bring me one from Taiwan. Oh my God. So I found one on, on the internet in yeah. Taiwan. I ordered it, sent it to my mom's, and yeah. I said, oh, can you bring this to me? in London, and she had to get a certificate. A little phytosanitary exactly. certificate. Well, I have to say that um, I got mine at a time before people knew about it, and I paid $39 for it. And I don't know if no that way. was any more or any less that you getting it from Taiwan, but I, I couldn't believe it, and I'm like so grateful I got it How during the time. How did you get it? Because it was before the rush of, of houseplant enthusiasm. But it was yeah. in a shop? No, no way. it was just no. online. Just online. online. There's online sellers who sold it yeah. before the craze and now they're going for like almost $400 in Oh some my cases. goodness, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. You know, you'd have to sell, sell a lot of, um, you know, vintage. And vintage stuff to, <laughs> yeah. to get a plant. Uh, and I was so happy because it came with obviously just like a tiny, yeah. you know, stem with two leaves. And the second year, the, 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 you know, it got more leaves. The third year, it got these two new stems. Oh my God, that's amazing. And then just a few weeks ago, it got this one, the Whoa, fourth. Oh, yay, yes. I'm rooting for you. You know, mine, mine flowered. Has yours ever flowered or no? Uh, yes. Okay, because when mine flowered, it actually died back. Oh, and, it did? Yeah, and it only had, um, it flowered with only two leaves on it. So maybe the energy was going to yeah, the flower, not the leaves. Going. So I, um, next time it flowers, I'm probably gonna cut it off. And, but now it was just a stem and now it's like four leaves again, which I'm thrilled about because I was like, no, <laughs> if I ever wanted to get you again, I'd be paying like 10 times the price. You know? <laughs> I cut off the flowers too, because they're yeah. kind of, they're not pretty. Yeah, yeah they're innocent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's one of the favorites. This one is quite popular now. The uh, Ring of Fire? Yeah, the Ring of Fire, exactly. Yeah. And um, whenever I, you know, shoot a video of it, I play Johnny Cash's the ring of, ring of fire. fire, yeah. <laughs> Perfect song for this. Well, it looks like it's already trying to crawl out of its pot here. Mm, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's got a nice. And then the cupria, right? The alocasia cupria. Yes, this one. You know, I think it had too much sun this summer, yeah. so it's not doing that well right now. But these and, could sometimes go dormant, you know, depending on the season and things right. like that. So you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah, I hope it'll bounce back yeah. soon. Oh, there's a great one here. This Ooh, is the yeah. Bulbophyllum. Orchid. Yes, yeah. uh, I think it's called Princess Elizabeth and Buckleberry or something crazy <laughs> like that. Uh, it's we'll a special get the exact name Yeah, we'll get the one. exact name. But yes. It's gorgeous. This is the second it's like flower the this it year. It has like tassels. I know, really long tassels and... I love that you have it in a bamboo pot that kind of has a similar shape yes, to the, yes. you know, the leaves and the petals, oh. yeah. Uh, and this thing here moves, or it did anyway. So this lip here in the yeah. middle, when I did this, it yeah. was kind of vibrating. Oh, that's but, cool. It's but probably it's for kind the, of dying a little it's bit. It's probably so. for when the, the flies or whatever jump on it and they look like they're going to mate with it or something right, like exactly, that. Right, yeah. exactly, yes. Yeah, this is a very nice orchid. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And your Maranta is beautiful. It's flowering right now. I know insignificant blooms, but it's always nice to see the blooms. Mm -hmm. And I love how it eventually, like oftentimes when we get these, they're kind of bushy, but then they start to drape. And I think that yours, you know, sh showcases that a lot. You know, yes, I chose this uh, basket for that reason. Yeah. So I can put it on top and give it a bit of height and let it drape down. Because when it gets too long, it's actually quite hard to make it look nice. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm curious because displaying plants is, you know, is integral, especially if you're living in a home, because there's some people who um, just want to have plants for the plant's sake and just have them in their house mm -hmm. with no kind of real um, curation or display. And there's others like who fall probably a little bit more on your end where there's like curation and display and it's very much in line with your business. So I'm curious as, how, as the house plant trend has increased across the world, how has it affected your business? Has it increased interest in your business or has it stayed the same comparatively? Oh, uh, I certainly have gotten a lot of interest in the pots now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it's actually really hard to get a nice looking pot. Yes. It's quite difficult. It is. Yeah. Um, so I get a lot of questions about, oh, where'd you get this pot? Where'd you get that pot? Mm -hmm. Because I do think that the, well, first of all, the shape 
it's hard to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to find a really wide button part that can hold any, you know, the nursery part. And one that doesn't go up like this. Exactly, I hate the ones that go yeah. up. <laughs> it can never get it yeah. out. Um, and the color, Yeah. sometimes when it goes with the plant, it's mm -hmm. really nice. Like, like you mentioned, like the orchid mm -hmm. with the bamboo, they mm -hmm. kind of have a similar shape. So mm -hmm. there's something going on there. It's kind of, they're talking to each other. Mm. Um, so yes, I, I have you been buying more. You chose gold for I this. I use gold for it. Because you know what? Gold and green are actually yeah. a classic combination. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you see the, the, the specs here, mm -hmm. uh, kind of actually goes with the, you know, the, the hammered yeah. look of yeah. the, the, the brass. And, and I should also mention your plant stands, which are also wonderful because you're pulling them up off the, the ground, which would be important if you had a chicken running around here. You would. You would want oh, yeah. your plants up above. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you have a cat, right? So, I do have a cat. Yeah. I'm so lucky that she doesn't touch any of the okay, plants. Okay, you are Except very for lucky, the yeah. spider plant. Yeah. She oh, eats that. Yeah. She likes that one then. So I keep that one there just for her to eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have some sacrificial plants then. <laughs> yes. Here are my caladiums. Very uh, lovely, which I think have made a strong, like, a comeback in the houseplant market. Yes. Or a strong showing in the houseplant market. Uh, they were kind of the star of the show this summer because I had actually more, but as you know, they, they don't do that well in. in they go dormant. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. So a couple of them have already, you know, they're already gone. Yeah. Uh, these are still hanging on. It's Which October. It's good to know because um, you'll see the ones that have a longer, I want to say lifespan, but um, have a shorter dormancy and like kind of longer foliage, they, they hold their foliage longer. So. It'll be kind of a little experiment for exactly, you here. Exactly, to see which ones. What kinds, you know. yeah. Um, this is the one that got me into uh, caladiums, the Florida clown. Yeah. Yeah, I just think it's so, cu so cute. It looks like, like somebody took the spatter paint exactly, and just like yeah. spatter brushed like, it all. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some really interesting ones that I think maybe this one could have been something similar to what I saw, but it was like a, a really white, angelic looking one. Um, I only have one currently in, in my house, caladiums, but. There's some that I've seen now in botanic gardens that are really thick leaved that don't oh, go really? into dormancy. And I'm like, oh. that would be a really good house plant. So I'm testing one, I'll let you know. Oh, please <laughs> yeah. do, yes. Because otherwise they're like the really papery kind, which has yes. its own appeal, but you know, to not go dormant, because otherwise sometimes when something goes dormant, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm like, I put the pot aside and like, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I know, I know, that's the thing. Oh, your, this is, a, yeah, we, can, we can talk a lot about yeah. it. <laughs> Let's talk a lot about yeah. it then. <laughs> your Pilea peperimuides. So, so I got this probably three or four years ago mm -hmm. when it was almost impossible to get one in the States. Yes. So when I first got it here yeah. uh, from Amsterdam, I got, yeah, I had to go to Amsterdam for this. Uh, I got so many messages on Instagram yeah. from people in the States. I can't buy one. They're like two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> They're now like seven. I know, I know, and that's the thing. Yeah. So, so they got. I guess they started growing them yeah, commercially, they did. right? Yeah. I think by the time there was like only one or two growers growing them, and they upped the price. And then I actually got um, a, two cuttings, also from Amsterdam. And I gave one to one of the growers, but by the time I gave it to him, it was the the price is already coming down. It was already like forty, thirty bucks. All oh, right. And then by the time he was in production, they were already like seven dollars. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it looks like it has a prolific amount of babies. Yes. So I used to cut off all the offshoots mm -hmm. and just I give them to people and just kept this main, you know, the main stem. Yeah. And then it started losing a lot of the lower leaves. Right. So it started to look quite bare at the bottom. So yeah. I started letting these grow. grow. Yeah. So but it's interesting it's too. It looks like some of them are starting to try to start back up too. I mean, um, you know, just around the edges and yes. the sides of the. See, and here it's growing a lot of new yeah. shoots too, just off the, the main stem. I love how you MacGyvered it like on the on the I know, pole. it was quite an effort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like stay upright up yes. here and like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Well, that way. you know, I it has to be straight. In I can see all the angles. OCD. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one, uh, Ficus everest. I think it's a new cultivar. It looks like from a Petiolorius, and then maybe a cultivar yes. of that. Yeah. yeah but, oh yeah. But not That's... with the red, you know, because I think that one it usually has a little bit of red veins, but. This one looks very similar to yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't if it's have the that. red veins, but yeah. what I love about it is the texture. It's very velvety. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I love textural plants because mm. I do 
have a tendency, as people know, touch my plants all the time. They're like, I love how you touch your plants, but it's hard not to when it has a, a certain give to it. So I know, for, yeah. You know. And I, I got this one in the UK, but I started posting pictures of it, and I got a message on Instagram from the grower of this plant oh, really? in the Netherlands. Yeah. He said, oh, do you like the plant? I grew it. Oh, that's uh, yeah. so nice. I know, it's really it's so nice cool. to be able to, to touch base with the grower who I know, grows the plants. I know. And they're sending me another new ficus cultivar that they're testing out. Oh, fun. Yeah, That's this is so marvelous. It is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's my dream to kind of do a, a greenhouse tour in the yeah. Netherlands. Oh, well, Have you done that? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I haven't, I've gone to some nurseries and some growers, and I was shocked at how, um, and botanic gardens as well, you know, but... It's, I'm always shocked at how automated it is in the Netherlands yes. compared to the United States. Right. Because in the U.S., and maybe here in the U.K. too, if there's any growers, it, it feels a little bit more like hands-on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people part of it. But the Netherlands is like almost like fully automated. I know, I know. And when they pick up the pots, it's like with a, with a, a forklift. Mm -hmm. And they're lifting yeah. hundreds all together and the watering as yeah. well. Um, this one, the Ludicia discolor. discolor, is one of my favorites as well. It's so, and again, velvety, that velvety touch, and also I love how it scrambles. Yours is so full and so reaching up to the light. I, I've repo I repot it every spring because mm. it gets really long, and yeah. I had to cut it back. So, yeah, I have to do that kind of every spring, and I give it a, a bit of a repot. And it flowers every January. So it gets so this gorgeous. really long. Yeah, the long, long stem with the white flowers. Yeah, with the white flowers. Yeah. And I think this is the, the most robust uh, jewel orchid. Because mm. I've tried like a couple others that are more green. Yeah. Um, but they just don't do quite as well. Yeah, they winter, seem, yeah. I, I find like my other jewel orchids are quite, they kind of stay compact or they don't have this like really thick rhizome that mm -hmm. just kind of spreads mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the same kind of uh, fashion. Yes, yeah, so this is. One of my favorites. Oh, this one. That's a really beautiful ficus. ficus elastica, but it, it, it looks like a, a cultivar that we don't have in the States. Right, and I, I, I'll get you the name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I know. It's really long, but I think the variegation is so pretty. It's very then, pretty because it looks unexpected. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like this one's a little bit more creamy white. This one's more golden jelly yes. colored. Yeah. Like every leaf has a different yeah, variation. Yeah, this is this minty. One, you know, a little pink, pink here. Pink, yeah. And then this is a sucralosa dracaena, right? Right? A Dracaena sucralosa, yes. but with like a different kinds of gold flecking. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, this is a very nice one too. It's just the, the stems are quite thin on yeah. this one, so I don't know how it will look after Over time. it's been growing a bit. Yeah. I like the pot it's in too, the planter. Let's showcase that. Oh, that's, this is the same ceramics as this, the, the kippy one. Yeah, well, yeah. that's probably why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another one that's been... You know. The black ZZ. Yeah, the I like how some of the new leaves come in kind of like a, a bright green and then they kind of turn black. Yes, when I first got it and I, I got the first new shoots that was green, mm -hmm. I, I did have doubt yeah. whether it will turn black. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> it's not going to turn black <laughs> because it was so green, right? Yeah, it, it, like bright, it green. Yeah, bright green. Bright yeah. green, yeah. yeah. And it, it took a few weeks, yeah. yeah, and very gradually. Yeah, you can see that one's just starting to morph, you know? Yes. Yeah. So this is like... 40% black now. Yeah. 50%. But see, that one is a lot, it's gotten yeah. a lot darker. Yeah. It's so funny. And then here you have a like a, like a podium, right? Uh, yes. Or I've been calling it Hoopertia. Hoopertia. Hoop Hoop yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this one, yeah, I got a tiny little cutting on the internet and it's been growing for three or four years. Okay. So that's been good because I, I know a lot of people who have Hoopertia or like a podiums, even James from the, the, the balcony in Singapore. I know. He's the king of yeah. these. Yeah. <laughs> He likes to have the, and what I found in botanic gardens is like they need a little bit more humidity, so they often put them over water. So it's really interesting that yours is like really thriving. I'm actually surprised that it's been yeah. doing so well. Cause, yeah. 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 Because they're usually growing kind of these upside down pots, right? Yes. So they can really drain yeah. all the time. And I have it in, in, you know, just like a bowl. Yeah. But it's, I'm very careful when I water it, like never too much, because I know they just don't like too much water. Yeah. Well, I, I almost have to like look up for a second because, sure. you know, your hanging plants are just so phenomenal. I, I usually 
kind of get lazy with my hanging plants because I have to get up on a ladder in order to be able to get them. And I'd love for you to comment on like how your care tips are for a lot of these um, plants up here. So I have three ladders. <laughs> <laughs> I have a small one, a medium one, a, a, the tallest one. The tallest yeah. one I use for actually hanging. Like I have to, if I have to change the position to ask, of the hook, like, <laughs> it's like a proper builder's ladder yeah. with like three sections. Oh my gosh. Um, You're not afraid of heights, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, well, that's <laughs> good. I am. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, you got to go up there and hang <laughs> yeah. the bots. Uh, oh, I, I even installed that mirror there wow. to reflect more sun because the sun is over there. So yeah. the sunlight hits this wall. Okay. And a lot of it is just kind of wasted up there. So yeah. I installed that mirror to reflect it back down here. Well, it's good. It's like kind of the Batman signal or whatever. Although you do, <laughs> you do have white walls, so that would probably help with a little bit yes. of the bounce, but the mirror, of course, would would be much would, more powerful. It's like a spotlight like yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure you don't burn the plant, you know? <laughs> little ant on there and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. It can feel like that yeah. in summer, yeah. Although, I mean, I've never been to London with um, sun actually out. Oh. These guys. <laughs> There's only three months of the year that you can actually see sun. Yeah. Uh, like now it's just over until next May. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad like to think about it. Ripping the day out of the calendars every day, just like 200 days until sun. I know. Oh. Um, but yeah, for the hanging plants, so usually I, I get on the medium ladder to mm -hmm. water them. So like this um, Tritoskenge, Tritoscantia, yeah. yeah. Uh, these ones, I just have them in a bowl. Uh, I, I, you can't see it now, but it's, an, yeah. it's actually in a nursery pot okay. with a drip tray oh, on nice. the bottom. And, and then the bowl. Yeah. So when I get up there to water it, I just, you know, just have a little bit of standing water. Yeah. Uh, I don't bother to drain it out, yeah. and it's fine. But the ones that are like this, like this Ripsalis, yeah. um, I put them in a basket and I actually cut a hole in the bottom. So mm -hmm. when I water it, I just hold another bowl at the bottom to let it drain wow, into okay. the bowl. So, okay. Yeah. So you could even just put it down here and like let it drip. I've done imagine. that too, but yeah. you know, it splatters. It splatters a little, yeah. sometimes from the, the height of it because it's up there high, you know? It's, yeah, it's yeah. quite high. The, the, well, the, I guess my point is with these ones, I don't do what I do with the Tritoscantia because yeah. the, the extra water is not so, they, they don't like it yeah. so much. So I just make they sure it's all They need to dry out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 You, and what do you do with the epiphyllums? I really should do it the same way as I do as with the Ripsalis, but yeah. I happen to have it in this bowl and I just yeah. make sure there's not too much water, water lying yeah. around. Two yeah. thirds of the way or whatever and, and filling it up just a little bit. Yeah. yeah, this one I like the I love the broad leaves, but Has it, it does not you flower. Yeah, okay. This one does not. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've talked to the the person who sold it to me. This particular variety doesn't flower. Oh wow. Um, okay. That's but a I've had others that do. Uh, <laughs> it's good that most of the time we grow our plants for foliage in house. You know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one that o that's always flowering is the begonia there. Oh, it's. Gorgeous! Look at the pink flowers. They're very meaty. Yeah, I just love the pink. And I and the dappling of this uh, is this more? Do you know what um, species this is? Or yes, cultivar? Uh, Coralina de Lucerna. Hmm. Lucerna, yes. Yeah, I mean begonias aren't always known for their flowers, but they do flower pro pretty prolific prolifically. Mm -hmm. You know, because most of the time it's for their their asymmetrical foliage. Yeah, the the, the angel wings. Yeah. Um, I used to have a, a maculata, yeah. the, the polka dot one, the bigger polka dot one. Yes. And they have, it had white flowers. Yeah. Um, and that's an actual species, the begonia maculata. This one's a cultivar, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this a serapegia or is it a hoya? Oh, yeah, it's a serapegia. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. You see the little yeah, flowers. The yeah, the little flowers are up there. The string of hearts. The string yeah. of hearts, yes. I, I know that the Serapegias are kind of in bloom right now, even though they're not really known for their flowers, but this is gorgeous, the way they have it hanging there. And, and then, Yeah, I got that vintage um, scale. Or, yeah, such a clever yeah, way to, to oh, do thank it. You. Yeah. yeah, the string of pearls. String of pearls and the, the Hoya Linearis. Linearis, yes. How has that been for you? Because I just got one about three months ago, and it's been... Doing well for me, this but is, I, right. I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know if it will continue to be doing well for me. This is my second try at it. Okay. Uh, my first one grew really well for like a year, and then it just kind of, you know, yeah, it's just dead suddenly, yeah. and it had some mealy bug struggles. 
That's tough, yeah. mealybugs, yeah. Because it almost looks like whenever I get a mealybug on a plant, I'm like, it doesn't look like it's, I'm watering it, but I know I'm watering it. And then it's like the life force is being sucked out of it. And then you see a mealybug and you're like, oh. I know. <laughs> I hate mealybugs more than anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky this year because I didn't get any. Last year Good. was the year of mealy bugs for me. Wow. How did you get, how did you, how did you uh, contain I, it? Did I did you get rid of some? I did a whole soap, get, neem yeah, oil thing. Yeah. Some of them I put outside. I yes. killed some. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm helps sorry. actually in the summer, yes. putting it outside and getting like the, the Just good the, the beneficial insects. Yeah. Tell it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's tough. Yeah. And yeah. it's a lot of, you got to, you know, physically wash them off and then the neem oil make the mixture. Yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I see the eye roll back there. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Knock on wood. Knock on. And then you have your, your oh, yeah, these, pepperomia heads here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> these are two of my favorite pots and uh, I got two different pepperomias with their hair. Yeah. And this one's in flower right here, which is fun because it looks like he has spiky hair. Mm-hmm. And then this is your Calathea, which I know it's just been reclassified, actually. Oh, it has? Yeah, it's, it's an unpronounceable name, because Calathea Mosaica Network used to be what yes. people kn knew it as. Yes. But now it's like Japortia Kingly. Oh, okay. I don't Network. think I can remember that. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I, can't even re I can't even pronounce it. I have to practice at it. Yeah, but, but this it's is, great. Yeah, this is one of those plans that when I first saw it for the first time, I just didn't, I couldn't believe that it existed in nature. I mean, look at the pattern, It's phenomenal. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And this is one of the calatheas that, you know, that have grown better in, in my place. You know what? Mine was doing very well, and then a house mouse oh. started gnawing on some of my prayer plants. And I, when I went to go see mine, it was all nibbled. And oh my I, God, think it, like I, it. I think it mm. knows that it's an edible plant, you oh, know, right. so, and I was like, oh, bummer, but I'm hoping, you know, because when they die back, they usually pop back up again. Yes, yeah. they, they do. So they're, they're quite resilient, but it's nice to see that yours is growing well, and it's not necessarily under the skylight, so. I, I might move it under the skylight yeah. soon, because in summer, we had a lot of light here. So, okay. Well, not, not direct light, but yeah. it, it was enough for it. But now we're getting into the darker months. I may move it under the skylight. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, like, I can Oh, I mean, yes. <laughs> well, this one. This, I know, has gotten you a lot of attention. Oh, yes, definitely. So, and it's growing out of the smallest little like, self-watering pot. And that's the thing. I really have to repot it. And I don't know how I mean, I'm going to do it. I mean, it doesn't look angry at you, though. I mean, it, it looks fine. Uh, except for this leaf here. Oh, one try. leaf. Oh, please. Ah, okay. That's your OCD. <laughs> <laughs> the plant is like, let it, let it mellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, I started growing it on the wall three or four years ago, probably four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just, I had to keep adding the little clips on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, to, cause it just wants to climb. I love it. It's kind of going that way now. Yeah, I yeah. see that. And I love how it has these like little birthmarks, like a little dark green birthmark here. Oh, yes. Um, little white rippling and birthmarks. There's another dark green one that I saw kind of oh, right here that you could see. It's, it's neat how you could see as it grows, then it actually starts to um, develop a slightly different leaf. Right. And I've, some of the leaves are getting bigger as they grow. Yeah. The ones at the top. Yeah. Well, they're probably like, all right, get into the sunlight. This one's going to find it first, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Let's what see. is this? Is this a lipismium? Or? This is a pseudoripsalis. Oh, pseudoripsalis. The okay. ramulosa. Okay. Well, it's, a... it's much um, thinner leaved than mine. You, you know, it's like half the size. Like, this is as yeah, far I as the breadth of why it. That is. Uh, yeah. I've had this for a long time. Yeah. And I think the leaves may have been broader, like wider before. Yeah. But this is the one that turns red in, yes, in the sun. In the so sunlight. it does a little bit here as yeah. well, but not completely red. And then your pilocarpa right there. Oh, yes. Which I, I is love so the fuzzy. kind of grayish green. Did it have, have fruits for you recently? Because mine was fruiting. Uh, I, I noticed the flowers, but I didn't, yeah, I don't think it, it went was to fruit yet. It, no. And oh, then, this is another epiphyllum yeah. that have, uh, I think it's called ac Acromania. Hmm, Acromania. That's a new one for yeah. me. Uh, it has these huge red flowers yeah. around May, June. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Wow. 
And That's then another philodendron. I don't remember the name of the it variety. It looks like a little bit like black cardinal. Or that may be like it, that. yeah. Um, but I love the color. I love the growth of how it's, you know, deciding to grow in that pot. Yeah, and this is African hemp. Wow. Um, I would, would not recognize this. It looks like a something solanaceous, like related to the uh, potato or tomato plants a I know, bit. and, and actually, of the fuzz. It looks like a big weed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a houseplant staple in the Netherlands. Is a lot, it? Yeah, they told me that a lot of them grew up with one of them. Wow. Um, so there's some nostalgia there for, yes. the, for the Dutch. Yes, and it's the, the texture that I love. Yeah, uh, that, that fuzzy. I, I can see that fuzzy. you like the fuzzy, velvety, velvety yes. leaf. And then this one. This one was also reclassified multiple yes, times. Yes, thematophyllum, right? right now, is it a thematophyllum? Or is it a? I think it starts with a TH. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, thematophyllum, thematophyllum. OK. Is it a Xanadu or? Xanadu, okay. yes, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I got this from IKEA, actually. It was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yes. good on you. So you um, probably got it at a nice discount. Yes, it was very cheap. Yeah. It was, wasn't tiny, but it was like maybe this big. And I've had it forever, and just yeah, I love how the leaves change its shape. Uh, so in the beginning, it was more like just, they weren't as, seg as serrated yeah. as these. And did you do you like every time you walk, you like do you like brushing up against it? <laughs> yeah, it's getting difficult to walk around the house. My guests are always like running into yeah. things. And, yeah. I, and I actually do want to point out the Warson Whiskey Eye, the Maranta, or the Calathea. Now it's a Japortia, but that one, because again, velvety leaves, um, kind of hard to uh, not point out that these have very velvety leaves and beautiful undersides as well. Yes, yeah, it was so beautiful this summer. Now it's starting to get some brown edges. Yeah. But yeah, with these ones, it's hard not to. It right? is, I mean, the humidity and, did it flower for you? Uh, yes, yeah. it did, yeah. White, the white, white flowers, The white creamy yeah. white flowers yes. are actually quite gorgeous, too. Very hard to keep perfect, though. Maybe not, somebody, not something for somebody who's so OCD as you. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with Calatheas. So yeah. yeah. They're beautiful in the summer, and then yeah. <laughs> when they start looking kind of, oh, I'm like, oh, should I give it to someone now? <laughs> What's the humidi humidity like in New York? Uh, in the summer, it's very humid. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. you don't need a humidifier. In the winter, with the heat on, I guess it depends on your heating units, but it usually drops down to about 30% humidity. Okay. So you need a humidifier. I see. Um, not only for your nasal passages, but also for your plants. Otherwise, a lot of them, a lot of the high maintenance ones are going to right. get very crispy. Yeah, yeah here I, we kind of tend to get away with it. Uh, it's, here it's about 50% mm -hmm. uh, most of the year, so yeah. it's not too bad. Yeah. When the sun is really shining in summer, it can go down to like 35%. Well, that's the um, thing, even one bad burn for some, some plants yes. could actually be a little bit of a death knell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this is just remarkable. I love, I love, love the fact of how you take like a curatorial approach to your plants. Oh, and just you. like the types of plants that you bring in, you obviously, you know, see that you have a really refined aesthetic, so pairing that up, because that's not everybody, that, that's not something that everybody could do, but given that it's like your line of business and your kind of passion. Yes, I kind of see them as works pair. of art, like I mentioned before, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, like the vintage pieces that I sell, like each one, you know, I appreciate it individually. Uh, and I, I try my best to display it, you know, the best that I can. Um, and so this is kind of my little garden here. So I, that's where I have my morning coffee usually yeah. on a chair and then just, you know, look at my plants. You had mentioned that you had some outside, huh? Oh yes, <laughs> so I have a summer camp. That's what I call it. Summer, <laughs> summer camp, camp okay. Yeah, where I put uh, my cacti and succulents outside before I move them in. Should we take oh, a quick look or should we, we just peek out the window or what do, you, what do you recommend? I think we should put on our shoes and okay. go outside and okay, take a look. Okay, cool, yeah. let's do that. Oh, before we head out, yeah. uh, let's talk about these three. Yes, absolutely. I don't want to miss any. So this is the pothos and enjoy. enjoy yes. Yeah. I like the variegation, and it got so long before. And then I had I did one video where I just took it off, and it like a big literally haircut? stretched yeah up to here. Oh it was that long. Goodness. Yeah, and I, I cut it all off, and I got like 
ten thousand crying emojis、uh, <laughs> in the comment section. Well,、that. you probably wouldn't get crying if you were like giving them out on the street afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, you know, when you have like a thousand things to do. Yeah. I don't have time to like divide the cuttings and、yeah. I post them to people. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh no,、photo. I believe you, me. I know. <laughs>、um, but you know what? It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. They yeah. can they can take a cutting. A they good, they、yeah. and they like it. They you know, like they it. They kind、yes. of get bushy back up because、yes. they, you know, to each their own. Some folks don't mind them draping, and then sometimes you want them bushy. And of course, you work out of here. You have kind of like a practical、mm, element.、Yeah. You have an aesthetic element. So. You know the plant needs to be pruned, <laughs> and I think it looks quite nice with a shorter haircut. Yeah. yeah. And this ripsalis. I love this one because it's like tassels. Yes, and I love how bouncy it is.、Yeah. I always play with this one, <laughs>、uh, and it's there's some flowers here.、Um, oh yeah, look at them, little yellow yeah, ones. Tiny、right? little yellow. Oh, the wh- yellow white and white.、Ones. Yeah. I guess I was looking at this, but the the base of them look like they're yellow, but this one looks like it had died back. And then, but they're little white ones, really insignificant, but nice when you come up to it and you can see how frilly and lacy they are.、Mm-hmm. And then, and is this an ashcanthus? Yes. It's got a、lipstick. really nice leaf structure to it. Yeah, this is one of my favorites too. It, it flowers all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so, a shame that it's not in flower now.、Right、but now, mine、yeah. is also very a very prolific flower.、Yes. Is, it, is it red flowers for this yes, one? Yes, red flowers. Yeah. Little red lipsticks. Yeah, I almost like feel like mine is in bloom seventy five percent of the year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mine's about fifty percent. Yeah.、So. I love it. You、Oof. have like different shoes that you put on different places, different times. Yes, OCD.、Ah! This one looks like my dad. It's actually a very neglected area here. <laughs> I can tell from the weeds. Doesn't, doesn't that look like my dad?、It、looks like my dad. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's got a less of a bushy beard, but. You know. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> I got this pot in Bangkok. Actually. That's so fun. Yeah. I love little head pots. I think they're so、uh, so gnarly. I have one that looks like、um, a little bit of a witch. So I think、uh, a lot of the witches out there kind of gravitate towards it. <laughs> cool. Serious、uh, for this is the, the spiralis. The, yeah,、wow. this is the star of the show. I ordered this on eBay.、Uh, mm-hmm. It was sent to me from Italy. Wow. They actually grow a lot of cacti in Italy. That's Cause fascinating. Because、um, uh, Jin, the owner of Conservatory、mm-hmm. Archives, who's、mm-hmm. a personal friend, she's getting a lot of cacti from Italy now. They're、mm. these like small, specialized、uh, growers that only grow cacti. So, and I, I didn't pay a lot for it, and I've never、wow. seen one this big, you know, commercially available. Wow. Well, I, I will put that back in my noggin of like places to to go、yeah. see and visit. This is is this a type of Crassula. It is yes. Un- unensis or something. I can't remember. I, it's a beautiful one. I've only seen it once at a botanic garden, but it's pretty、um, marvelous. Yeah, I love I the love color. I love the dark color. Yeah, yours is nice and compact. And then I love the reticulated look of、um, this. These, I think it's a type of opuntia.、Uh, yes, it is a opuntia.、Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like,、oh, I can't stand I it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neglected here.、Uh, no I just, way. I put everything out here in spring, and and then I just kind of leave them alone. <laughs> no, but it's good. I mean, I think that it, they're, they're, you know, kind of sopping up some of the sun's rays. They're direct. They're obviously clearly happy. Um, oh, a tephro cactus with the pepperaceae. Love those. The problem with this one is that it keeps falling off. Like the new growth, is that how it propagates? Like, yeah. I think this, yes, this it fell is. Yeah. 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 And they they will propagate that way. So, just probably doing what you're doing with putting them around、mm-hmm. is is fine. And this one already looks like it has roots. You know, little yeah. Little root that came out. It knows、oh, what to do. I think that's another one that fell off.、Oh, fell、yeah. off of the the yeah. Bin. Oh, that's fun. So, how do you how do you bring these back in in that in the house? Where do you where do you end Actually, up stashing them? Some of these are winter hardy in、oh, England, and I just move them over there. Oh, perfect. Under this walkway, so、yeah. they don't get rained on. Yeah. Well, I find my you know I have a very blustery window in my in my、uh, in my windows, so、yeah. I just I find that my cacti are the ones that cacti and succulents are some of the ones that could handle the the cold temperatures. Right. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Like last year, I left. Uh, which one did I leave out? Well, all the opuntias、yeah. I leave out because they're quite hardy.、Mm-hmm. But last year I l- left out one that was sure that was gonna die, but、mm-hmm. it was just which one was it?、Um, oh, this one. Oh, nice. Because it looks 
a, more like a like a jungle cactus. Yeah. So I, I was sure that it was gonna die, but yeah. it, it was completely fine outside. Oh, very yeah. good. This one I also ordered online. Uh, I think that's similar to the, it's called pine cone cactus, but this one has the spines, right? Yes. Um, and I waited three years for it to grow this big. <laughs> it was just completely, it was just not doing anything. Yeah. I, I was actually questioning whether it was dead. <laughs> but this spring, it yeah. grew this little ball here. It looks here. like a little um, uh, kind of steampunk snowman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect description for it. And good things come for those who wait. So that one's a little bit more, you had to be patient with it. This is, this is marvelous. I love the beautiful display that you have here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and the, knowing that the weather it is, that some of these will have to be, you know, bundled up over there. Yes, yeah. protected from rain. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate oh, this. this. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice having you. It was so nice having you. It's really nice meeting you. I actually have a copy of my book that I'm going to give you, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. So, so, um, so I brought that for you. It's good because I, I don't have to take it home, too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so this is marvelous. Thank you so much for taking us around thank your you. place and thank sharing you a little coming. bit of your story. <laughs> Share your thoughts on Jamie's skylit London home and if it stimulates some new decor directions for your place in the comments below. Keep on top of your plant's care. Sign up for my houseplant care spreadsheets. If you purchase the 125 houseplant care spreadsheet or enroll in the houseplant masterclass, you'll also get tutorials for our free houseplant care tracker, which sends you automatic reminders for watering and fertilizing. Additionally, you'll be able to record track and share important milestones in your plant's life. Details on homesteadbrooklyn.com and in the description below.